Hi everyone, uh, thank you to the European Alliance for Innovation for this opportunity to present here at uh, the Pervasive Computing Technologies for Healthcare Conference. My name is Ran Reiner, physician by training and a medical manager uh, at MIMED. Uh, so we are a host response company. And as captured by this talk's title, we leverage the host response to innovate actionable tests that improve patient care. MIMED is a rapidly growing company. We have offices in Haifa, Israel and in Boston, USA. We have raised a significant capital from top tier investors and been the recipient of 30 million US dollars more in awards and contracts from the European Commission and US Department of Defense. As for our amazing uh, uh, multidisciplinary team, uh, it includes essay developers, engineers, immunologists, bioinformaticians, physicians, regulatory specialists, marketing and sales prof professionals, and more. And we tackle tough clinical dilemmas by combining our expertise in host response profiling with machine learning algorithm. Uh, we started with what we call the fever encounter. You or your child or a parent presents with a fever, perhaps a cough, or a sore throat, and the physician has to assess your clinical condition and make several decisions. The first one will be, is it a bacterial or a viral infection to give or not to give antibiotics? So that first decision is, is tough as the symptoms of bacterial and viral infection are often extremely similar and pathogen-based tools have inherent limitation. So on the one hand, antibiotic overuse of viral infection is associated with, uh, associated with unnecessary adverse events and is a driver of antimicrobial resistance. On the other hand, underuse, which is delayed or no treatment of the bacterial infection, can lead to medical complications, including sepsis. And this takes us to the other dilemma or the other decision the, the physician has to take. How likely is this infection going to progress to severe disease? Now, this is challenging as there are few truly predictive tools as opposed to the correlative ones uh, 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 available that are both accurate and practical, meaning that they can be easily incorporated into the workflow. A predictive tool. Now, leveraging the host immune response to develop new tools for addressing these clinical dilemmas is not just another geeky detail. This approach can address the inherent limitation of a pathogen-based testing. For example, as the immune system circulates throughout the body, an immune-based test does not require access to the infection site, which is a big thing. And as we measure the body's response to the invading pathogen, we do not need to detect the pathogen itself. Uh, unlike tests such as syndromic PCR and sequencing that provide wealth of detection information without indication of whether a microbe is causing disease, leading to false alarms, the immune system is not typically triggered by our natural flora and reflects the etiology of these disease of the disease causing agent. Finally, as the immune system responds to multiple pathogen patterns, it is not species specific. And very importantly, it, it, it indicates also emerging pathogens. Uh, from its inception, our vision was to develop a blood test that would take a few minutes, small volume of blood, and assist the physician in these decisions at the fever encounter. So for the next couple of minutes, I will tell you about our efforts to address the B versus V dilemma. And this has been a, a crazy 10 year journey from discovery through our product development and validation to regulatory uh, clearance, including both CE mark and recently FDA clearance. And through a large proteomic screen of over 1000 patients with acute infection, we identified three proteins that exhibit differential expression in response to bacterial and viral infection and develop an, uh, an algorithm that uh, um, combines their levels into a bacterial likelihood score. The proteins are called TRAIL, IP10, and CRP. And in these graphs, as you can see, every dot 
is a patient. The y-axis are the concentration level of the biomarker in the serum. Thread on your left has the unusual behavior of being induced by viral infection and reduced by bacterial infection, making it particularly useful as a, a differential biomarker. Alone, it is not sufficient for broad and accurate application. Okay? Now, IP10 is induced little by bacterial infection and more by viral infection, and CRP as a classical uh, um, inflammatory biomarker exhibits a mere expression for, of being induced a little by viral and more by bacterial infection. Uh, the power for accuracy and broad applicability of the algorithm derives from the participation of these three biomarkers in different pathways and their uniquely different expression dynamics. And in fact, enabling them to cover each other's blind spots and perform above and beyond of any of them alone. The algorithm combining trail IP10 and CRP is called MIMED. Since its derivation in 2015, we have validated BV's high sensitivity and specificity of over 90% for differentiating between bacteria and viral infection in plenty of prospective clinical studies and real-world settings, enrolling over 20,000 patients. However, a high-performing test is not actionable if you can't perform it when and where you need it. So to measure those proteins rapidly and accurately, Together with the Department of Defense, over the last five years, we have created a new measurement platform that you can see here called Key. Short video, let's see if it works. You have the key, you have the cartridge, which is the test, goes into the device, 15 minutes time, accelerated here in the video, and you have your result. You will have the score here and the analytes, all right? Uh, so, as I said, the test runs in 15 minutes from serum. Now, going back to our second dilemma of progression to severe disease, uh, I will tell you about our, our, our ongoing efforts to develop a host-based tool for risk stratifying infection severity. We initiated a clinical and RD program to screen for universal or general infection severity biomarkers when, well, the emergence of SARS-CoV-2 changed the world as we know it. Uh, in order to address the, the, the urgent and immediate need for a test to help predict which COVID patients are likely to deteriorate, and who could benefit from a, a, a timely care escalation, we pivoted our attention to discover biomarkers that stratify the severity of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Now, even from the first wave, we initiated uh, 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 collaborative efforts with multiple medical centers to get hold of samples from COVID-19 patient, patients with varying severity. And based on over 1,400 samples, we started deciphering the very complex immune response leading to that severe outcome. We quickly undercovered something very interesting, that the same three biomarkers that constitute mimid bv namely TRAIL, IP10, and CRP, are differentially expressed also in response to SARS-CoV-2 infection severity. As I mentioned earlier, TRAIL is upregulated in viral infection, but what makes it useful for infection severity is that it is downregulated in severe viral infections. We, together with many in the field, found that elevated levels of IP10s are an early marker of pathological lung damage, and uh, uh, CRP is a general marker of infection severity. So we derived a new algorithm based on those three proteins that predict the likelihood of severe outcome for symptomatic COVID-19 patients. And this algorithm is the basis of a test we call MIMED COVID-19 severity. So when building a machine learning predictive algorithm based on biomarkers, on the one hand, it is a good idea to pull data from all available resources. And then it is more likely the algorithm will be generally applicable and the statistical power is maximized. 
On the other hand, a concern with this approach is that it can introduce confounding factors with, which compromise the algorithm performance and robustness. In the case of the COVID-19 pandemic or this one pandemic, multiple moving targets, uh, the patient population presenting at the ED changed the course times and the treatment was evolving as well. So there were even more potential confounders. To address these opposing consideration, we developed a, frame, a framework to establish what we call health system comparability. We define parameters that reflect the two major dimensions of COVID patient management, which is the respiratory status and the, the, the pharmaceutical management, uh, and employ these to assess pullability of various sub-cohorts and boost our statistical power. Uh, so let's start from there uh, with the respiratory status. Uh, to normalize the respiratory management as it is linked to the patient, patient respiratory status, obviously, we selected the objective parameter of SpO2 to FiO2 or SF. Uh, specifically, we selected the lowest SF value during the patient's hospitalization course as it indicative of worst respiratory performance. We did try to venture with PF, P to F ratio, PA2, but it was very limited, very invasive, and we didn't have enough uh, uh, data on that. Uh, luckily, uh, there are plenty of studies, uh, that even WHO guidelines, that indicate that S to F ratio is a very good or an acceptable surrogate for P to F ratio. Now, on this slide, you have two panels, where dark gray represents Israeli patients and light gray U.S. patients. On the right, uh, you see the SF ratios for the cohort of patients that uh, uh, were intubated, and on your left, those who were not intubated. And it is clear that uh, um, the sites or those geographies are comparable, supporting that the respiratory status and respiratory management of COVID-19 patients is not significantly different across these two geographies. Uh, another important element, as I mentioned before, was the therapeutic management. So to examine the equivalence of the therapeutic management, adherence to NIH treatment guidelines was called we first classified our patients according to the NIH guidelines subgroups. You will see that in a second. And from there, we checked how many were, management, were, manage, uh, were managed in alignment with the recommended NIH treatment for that group. So here you have the different groups. And here you have what we saw between our geographies. NIH treatment guidelines adherence rates were compared across geographies and found not to be significantly different, as you can appreciate from this graph. So let's try to sum up. To sum up, when designing a prediction model, a challenging and risky aspect is data pullability across multiple sub-cohorts, which is very clear. This risk is even more pronounced when we face a massive pandemic with multiple moving targets, as we discussed before. Establishing health system comparability was the key for resolving that problem, and together we were able to learn that the objective respiratory parameter of SF ratio and treatment scoring indicate that patients can be pulled from these sub-cohorts and create a robust, generalizable, and statistically powered tool. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Uh, uh, massive thanks for our uh, PIs and, and for the patient who uh, agreed to participate in the study and, and help us create this very important tool. Uh, here are the centers that uh, took part in this uh, uh, journey, uh, creating a tool to uh, tackle this pandemic. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Stay safe.